Pokemon Emerald Rogue is a game where the elements of roguelike and characteristics of Pokemon come together to form an experience unlike any other. As the game starts off with the customization of your own avatar, with the option of modeling yourself after the trainers of Kanto or Hoenn, alongside some custom skin palettes and trainer outfits. The journey takes you through a series of routes, from places of familiarity to optional routes that you skipped over after being given that HM for flying. Each route has its own set of randomized encounters, trainers to battle, and items to pick up, and you'll be using whatever you find against a gym leader of a certain type by the end of each level. Your goal is to defeat the Elite Four and become the champion within one single playthrough, as failing to do so will force you to restart from the beginning. And while this is technically not a Nuzlocke, Pokemon that faint during your adventure are buried six feet under, so... It'll hurt a lot more when you lose your starter to a girl walking her pet dog in slime. Although, my options for a starter to go with weren't exactly... optimal. We got a Zigzagoon. We have a Dully Bird. And we have a pseudo wood elf. <laughs> what the hell is this lineup here? Um, hmm. Contemplating my options between an HM slave, a bird with a move that sometimes doesn't deal damage, or a tree. I went with the tree. I figured because of pseudo's high defense stat, she'd be a lot easier to work with than the other two. And with that, our attempt was finally underway. On our first of many routes, we encountered a Pachirisu that we named Veldora, and a male Ralph that we named Zentaro. There was also a Sigilith and a Pontiard, but I ended up passing on both options. I wasn't confident about using Sigilith, and I wasn't really up for investing time in Pontiard this early in the run. So, after grabbing a handful of items, I moved on to the next route where I found a Bale Style or Choreo, a Glorian Yaw Mask and Stunfisk, and as well as a Numel. Hi, how are you? Yama the Glorian Yaw Mask and Reddit the Oracorio joined our team, though Reddit's time with us would be short lived, as I made the spontaneous decision to trade them away for whatever this old man had in his back pocket. Alright, Reddit. We'll see you later. Alright, what are we gonna get from that? We got- we lost out on Oricorio, and in exchange, we got a not to. Ugh, maybe I should've kept that. Yeah, maybe not the best decision I could've made. And I could definitely say for certain, this wouldn't be the last. Tumblr the Natu joins our gang, and together with this group of five, we finally take on the first gym leader. Oh. Ooh, wait, are you so- are you ground type this early? Oh shit! <laughs> oh, this is- wow, I- Early, I chose correctly. Talk about an awkward start to a gym battle here. And with two Pokémon who are pretty damn hydrophobic, no less. Oh boy. Vildora searches in for free as Juan sets up the rain while his B-barrel begins racking up those defense pros. Thankfully, both Pseudo and Veldora were able to take down the B-Barrel, but Pseudo definitely didn't appreciate getting so concerned in the beatdown. So, as I swapped Pseudo out for Zentaro, our little Ralts friend here... didn't have the best time fighting Juan. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really just threw Zentaro under the bus like that. <laughs> oh, no. With one badge down and our first death of the run, we'd have quite the road ahead of us. Our next route featured quite a bit of Pokemon that could fill in the holes in our team. Ox King of Tauros and Autumn the Gloom joined the team. As I contemplated on unsuitable replacement for Tumblr, I ran into someone that would never approach me first in real life. A woman. Specifically a Team Magma Grunt with her pet dog and slime that I wasn't really up for fighting. Unfortunately, she didn't take no for an answer, and as you can see... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I had a great time. Gummy Bear the Alolan Grimer and my replacement for Tumblr, Drake the Dino, joined the team. With half the group needing to reach a higher level for their full potential, it was going to be pretty tough trying to keep them all safe. 
But if all goes well, then this team's got the means of reaching the end. After a bit of preparation, we approach the second gym leader with a little more confidence than what we had with Juan. It's fine, let's do Veldora and Ox King together. Oh. I may have fucked up here. <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello. Um. Hmm. Again. Seriously. Although the start of the battle was a bit disheartening, it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. Dwubble goes down to Veldora while Autumn steps in to drain the life force out of her relative. Not bad, but that's not all she had up her sleeve. Alright, we got Arch. Oh boy. Get Arch in. And Omora! Okay, I'm a nuzzle the Archon, and then I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to intimidate them down. <laughs> I'll bring the I'll bring in Autumn. I'll bring Autumn back in a little bit, a little later. Oh my goodness, headmatch! <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh wait, what is this? What is this? Is this... Uh, come on. Come on, Ox King. Come on, Ox King, you can live this. <laughs> okay, Ox King lives. So now we're gonna come back. Autumn is fine. I really came back in on an icy one, huh? Alright. I'm actually gonna heal here. <laughs> uh, let's not accidentally screw up. Alright, then Mega Drain should be a Uh oh. Whoops! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> bye, bye, Autumn. Come on. Come on, Gummy Bear. You can tank it. Okay, there we go. Woo! Okay, <laughs> twice now! That's twice. Oh my goodness. That happened. <laughs> That's twice now that I uh, got counterpicked by the gym leader? Uh, that's twice now that I've lost a Pokémon to a gym leader. Two badges down at the expense of two Pokémon. I needed a bit of a breather. Oh, the game show, though. You know what? Let's go with the game show right now. This will either trade away my Pokémon, or, uh, do something way more heinous. Alright, I believe in the left. I'm going left all the way. Yo, let's go. All right, left all the way, baby. Oh no. All right, and now uh, now we're broke. A few minutes later, we can get Rolf again. Let's go. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, welcome back, Zentaro. It's like we never lost you. After a bit of training, Zentaro the second catches up with the team, and without my realization, Yama had also evolved into Runarigas. My plan for the third gym leader was simple. Zentaro would stack a few calm mines and sweep. We're slower than the Magmar. That's not. I don't like that. Bruh. Oh, we lost our buff. Alright. Well, I guess I have to fight this normally now. Magmar goes down, but not without confusing Yama on their way out. And as if it was right on cue, Yama also gets burned by Flannery's Growlithe. This seems familiar. Flannery sends out Houndoom as one of her last Pokémon, and if I'm reading this pattern correctly, then I know that Yama's going to be taking the brunt of these attacks. So I had Yama use Protect, thinking it would be the safest move to make. Wait, what? Wait, Z-Power? Uh-oh. What the shit? <laughs> you were protected! That was with Protect! What? There, there's no dark gem on that thing. That had what? What? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Why did that deal so much damage? Oh man. Why did that deal so much damage? That was to protect. Oh, get rid of the hound, you fuck him. <laughs> holy, sh holy shit.
Holy shit indeed, my friend. Prior to this playthrough, I decided to enable Z-moves and Mega Evolution for old times' sake. And... maybe I'll keep them off next time. But who knows. But for now, let's get back to where we left off. After receiving our third badge, at the expense of another Pokemon, we trekked on into an ice maze. Nothing really happens here. I mean, I caught a Rabombi named Dandelion, and I also ran into our old pal Delibird. <laughs> And in other news, Gummy Bear evolved into an Alolan Muck, and we eventually make our way to the fourth gym leader, Claire. She leads with Dino and Shelgon, so I switch Veldora out for Zentaro while Ox King tries to dish out as much damage as possible. By this point of the run, Ox King was an adamant nature while holding onto a choice bait. He also had the move Return and the same type attack bonus. So, on paper, uh, Ox King would be hitting like a truck. Fracture and Dracovish come out, and if anyone wasn't aware, this tweet serves as a reminder that if you leave this silly little fish uncontested, it will destroy entire nations. But knowing this information actually distracted me from the real threat of Claire's team. We still outspeed Fracture at minus two, that's pretty nice. Bruh. Almost <laughs> Ah, Poison jab? Are you serious? Oh, he got me with the poison jab there. That's on me. Dandelion and Ox King take out the remainder of Claire's team, and the fourth gym badge was ours. As we traverse onwards looking for a new team member, and the Lolan Marowak bearing the vengeful spirit of Zentaro joins our team, though their time with us wouldn't last as I really like Excadrill. And with the inclusion of the boss, I was pretty happy with the team. The so, after obtaining a reminder of what could have been, we approach the next gym leader, prepared to gimmick our way through Pokemon's most overrated villain, Giovanni. Because of Sand Rush, the boss easily outspeeds both Nidos and takes them out with an earthquake. And because Veldora was holding on to an air balloon, she was able to avoid getting hit herself. The Sand Slash and Rhyperior came out next, and they were going to be a lot more difficult to deal with. Not only were they both able to survive an earthquake, but it also gave Sand Slash the opportunity to remove Veldora's air balloon. So Ox King tags in for Veldora while the boss manages to deal with the Rhyperior. With Sand Slash on the verge of committing their 13th reason why, all that's left was Giovanni's last Pokemon. Helix, though. Ah. Uh, oh shit. Oh lord. Come on. Come on, the boss. Single target drill run. Oh boy. Okay, choice fans off. That's fine. Oh, this is gonna do nothing. All right. Oh, that's my heart! Come on! Come on, guys! No, the boss! Oh, goodbye, the boss! Come on, do, do a little bit. Do a little bit. Okay. Alright, this should KO, maybe. Oh, thank god. Oh, man. I am so sorry, the boss! Uh, rest in peace, buddy. With five gym badges in hand, we were closing in on the end of the gym gauntlet. And as we made our way towards the 6th gym, I started to reflect on some of the choices that I made. Like, why did I catch a Mimikyu knowing that we were bound to fight both of their weaknesses? I mean, sure, Drake got to evolve and all, but four of their five weaknesses were still on the board. Am I... am I seriously going into this last half of the run knowing that? Sure, um, fighting a strong trainer could potentially give us better options, but we didn't have to do that. Plus, Spencer left us with a Lucario Knight that we couldn't use, and two Pokemon that we also couldn't use! Like, what was going through my head?! <laughs> but through it all, I made some adjustments with our movesets, and we walked up to Winona, who led with the Zatu and Aledia. Not knowing what to expect from this pair, I wanted Dandelion to Quiver Dance a few times before setting up for a Baton Pass-powered break, but this pair ends up dealing a lot more damage than I thought they would. 
leaving Dandelion in a position where they couldn't use Quiver Dance again, forcing me to either heal Dandelion now or execute my plan preemptively. I'm gonna baton pass into Drake. Wait, bruh. I fucked up. I need to switch into Beldora. Yes! Oh, I fucked up! I forgot! I didn't know that's how that worked! Oh, I'm an idiot! Despite the fumble there, Beldora ended up becoming the MVP of this fight. By using Follow Me to distract Winona's Pokémon, Drake and Robin were able to take care of the rest of Winona's team completely uncontested. Not only did we secure the 6th gym badge, but this was also the first time that we had a gym battle go this well. I mean, we even had a consolation prize that looked like a shiny Aerodactyl on top of that. And you know what? For a moment, I was feeling pretty complacent. Which was a feeling that you shouldn't have in a roguelike. Wait. Oh. Uh oh. Iris the Haxorus joins the team, and together we make our way to the seventh gym leader. Norman. Not knowing what to expect from Kamala and Bufalon, I had Iris Dragon Dance while Veldora would use Charm on both of Norman's Pokémon. Kamala gets Charm, but a knockoff on top of a facade causes Veldora to take too much damage, forcing me to switch Veldora out early before she could Charm his Bufalon. Robin tags in, causing Bufalon to miss a facade, and a Protect from Kamala stops Iris' plus two outrage momentarily before she finally hits the mark. The fairy type, Wigglytuff, comes out, and Iris had a 50% chance of living this turn. It all came down to whether or not she would land her outrage on the right target. Don't hit the Wigglytuff. Oh my god! <laughs> you hit the Wigglytuff! Hi, Iris. Yeah. Oh man. I knew- he, somehow I knew he would hit the Wigglytuff. <laughs> With the combined efforts of Robin and Ox King, we were able to defeat Norman and obtain the 7th Gym Badge. And with one Gym Leader and a whole gauntlet of an Elite Four remaining, this next encounter was crucial. Between the options of Meowstic and Glorian Slowpoke, I decided to pin my hopes on Potato the Slowpoke, believing in the potential of having either a Galarian Slowking or Slowbro at my side. And wouldn't you know it? The planets have aligned as we were greeted by both the Galarica Reef and Cuffs as options. I decided to go with the Galarian Slowking, because we needed a Pokemon capable of taking damage. So as I made my final preparations, I was trying to face off against either a Fairy-type Gym Leader or an Ice-type Gym Leader, just so that we wouldn't have to deal with them later. Are you kidding me?! Looking forward to fighting. I need that Durant to go to go to hell. First impression. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh no! Durant was becoming a major problem as the small bastard dealt tons of damage and flinched Drake all while sitting in the red. Thankfully, Drake dodged his superpower and we were able to get rid of the pest. And because Wormadam was hardly contributing to this fight, all our team had to do was target the other slot. Unfortunately, her other slot was none other than a Genesect! Not knowing how to deal with this roach, I feared for my chances. But a subconscious switch from Drake into Robin causes Genesect to miss their hyper beam. And while Veldora was able to land a Nuzzle and a Super Fang, Genesect targets Veldora with another hyper beam, and she goes down. Robin's disguise was torn to shreds, and I was left in a position where most of my team wouldn't be able to damage the stupid roach. A wounded Drake tags in, followed up by Potato who swapped in for Robin. Drake lands a crit on Genesect, while Potato lands a Shadow Ball on her Wormadam. Genesect may have been taken down, but 
Jasmine also had another surprise left in store for us. Are you fucking kidding me? You have a second one! You're joking! God. Hey, I should've doubled in. Oh, that did nothing. Uh, Cleveland? Because of Potato Sacrifice, Drake was able to deal enough damage to get rid of the second Roach. And while I was livid at the prospect of a potential third Genesect, Jasmine decided to enlighten us with the Sales steal up. Like, can you just not? <laughs> the battle was already off to a rough start. With me blundering in Earth Power because of Celesteela's typing, Gummy Bear makes up for the hit with a knockoff that dealt about 60%? Gummy Bear then follows up with another knockoff alongside Drake's Dragon Pulse, but even with her combined efforts, the Celesteela was just barely able to hold on. And it ends up landing a crit with its air slash into Gummy Bear, who held on briefly, but an iron hit from Jasmine's Warmer Dam strikes him down. Things weren't looking good. Ox King steps in, and while I was trying to heal Drake, Ox King misses his Zen headbutt, not once, but twice in a row. This is not the time to be missing moves, Ox King! Come on! Ox King finally lands the Zen headbutt, but ended up taking too much damage from Toxic. And while I did try to keep the two of them as healthy as possible, Sadly, my efforts were in vain as Ox King just couldn't hold on. Jasmine's Bastiodon goes down to Drake's last Earth Power, and together with Robin, they were able to take out Jasmine's Woman, securing us the victory. But at what cost? We were at the final stretch of the run, but we were beaten to a pulp, strained of our resources, and forced to watch as one after another. Our companions were taken away from us. We had to fight uphill battles and damage calculations that didn't make any sense. And the run was only getting worse. As Lino Bloom the Cradley stubbornly joins the team with this moveset, an Afro the Bouffalant giga impacts and kills Drake before joining. Like, why? Why would you do this? You beta Toros clone! But the cherry on top of it all was when I was spotted by this small child at the wrong place and wrong time. And with their aggron and stack attacker in hand, cause why not give this child an ultra beast? This run was over. The whole team was wiped out and I had no one to blame but myself. This time, I came out short, and that's okay, it happens. That's just part of the process, although this won't be how my story ends. Instead, if there's anything this run has taught me, it's that it's reminded me of how my story began, and it all started with but a single cry.